Mika is one of the most unique artists in pop music today, and that probably has something to do with his unusual upbringing and musical training. I was born in Beirut in 1983, and then we were evacuated a year later because of the civil war that was there and I ended up in Paris with a whole kind of transplanted Lebanese community and then at the age of nine moved over suddenly to London. It was a really weird shift. I had quite a charmed existence when I was living in Paris and moving over to London was kind of rough. So I had a hard time from the kids and I was pulled out of school by a very strong-willed mother who realized that school was probably the worst place for me to be at that time and during that time I started to learn you know singing with my Russian singing teacher and she whipped me into shape pretty fast. Her name was Ala and she had this little mole on her face and whenever she would get upset her little mole would start to quiver and her lip would go up and then she'd scream at me in Russian. It became even more clear that Mika was not like the other kids when he became a professional musician at a very early age. I got my first job at the age of 11. It was in the course of a Strauss opera. And then I got lots of jobs after that. Everything from really serious contemporary music all around Europe to singing on jingles and in-flight music. There's nothing more depressing than sitting at the back of a British Airways flight at the age of 15 when you're dreaming of doing, you know, being a star and sitting at the front of the plane one day and you hear your music, your voice piping through those awful speakers that they have on planes. Muzak is bad when your voice is on it, believe me, it's a lot worse. With such obvious talents, Mika should have had record labels banging down his door. But that wasn't the case because his eclectic sound made it too hard for the music business to pigeonhole him. Not coming from any scene was very much a barrier. I suppose it was really a barrier when I was apologetic about it and when I tried to hide the fact that I was not like everybody else. Musically and also in my personality and in my dress sense and in other things. Only until I made that decision to be a hundred times myself and to create a space for myself in the industry did it start to come together and then everybody wanted to sign me and now Mika's first single Grace Kelly is one big kiss off to the labels that rejected him I was working with a music company at the time in the UK and they were trying to mold me into what they thought would be marketable pop music but what I thought was dirge. I got upset and I went home and they wanted me to write a commercial hit, as they said, and I wrote Grace Kelly instead and it was basically saying, you want me to be like so-and-so male pop star, I'll be like Grace Kelly instead, let's see if you still want to sign me, and they didn't. But it's funny how two and a half years later everything kind of bubbles up and, and things take their, their own course. And I'm very privileged to be able to start my career with a song that is a testament to honesty. <laughs> Mika is in the critical eye.